Welcome back to another advanced game maker studio tutorial and this video is a follow up to the basic turn based grid based or just chess piece uh, system which I showed you and today I'm gonna do one thing so for example I'm having this guy here and he can move but for example once he's hitting uh, well the wall he cannot go further so for example I'm pressing upwards or let's say left and I cannot go over that or then maybe a more interesting thing for example I click on this guy then I have a rectangle so he selected and then I can well go some specific uh, tiles so let's say eight or nine or whatever but here as you can see I'm pressing um, my right mouse button to move but he's not but for example once I'm in the green spot bam getting teleported bam getting teleported this is how you can actually do some turn-based movement of course you can do a little bit more but these are just the principles and they are quite a few so this is an advanced tutorial lots of variables modulo and so on so if you're not familiar with that then maybe skip on this tutorial so if you want to know how to do that in game maker studio stay tuned this is one hub indie i am the developer of the indie game lunky souls and a programmer slash pixel artist so Ooh, if you are new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I try to upload every day or every second day a video, but now every day as it seems. So let's get right into the good stuff because there's lots of things which I actually wanted to show you. So let's start with the old stuff, which was the movement. So here, um, I just comment that out and well, not everything, I just need and this is for example the thing which I did uh, at the last time and here I just added a little thing which is just a collision so for example before that I could just go out but here I just say hey um, you're pressing right and you can move so if you watch my last video then this is basically the same but now I put in a if extra if clause and then I'm saying hey let's zoom in a little bit if I'm not having a collision point, so if, I'm, if this is not returning uh, one, so if I'm not colliding, let's say, let's say x plus 16, y plus 16, because well, we are on a grid of 16, so therefore I say if we are pressing right and if we are not colliding with a wall, so these are the red things here, so these are the walls, then, um, well, we can move 16 pieces to the right and then of course add a turn this was alternative you don't have to do that then an alarm so artificially uh, limit how many uh, movements you can do but of course you can skip on that and then well you can move because this was the old variable of course you can make it a little bit more fancy uh, what i did no ah here we go let's comment it out again then of course i had a little bit more concerning the sprites and so on so i leave that open so this is the kind of update so if you want to have some collisions and you well want to avoid it well here you go and now we come to the more interesting parts so of for example here now this will be a little bit more complicated and then i have to some extra explaining to do so let's zoom in so this is our guy and now we want first of all to do a selection so the first thing we do we have uh, our mouse here and then we click on this guy and then i have a variable which are called selected and then well this guy is selected for example if you're having let's say a different kind of a player um, well units you want to move around not just the player and this is the way to go so you just select this guy and then you press the right mouse button to move him to a specific um, well area and then here as you can see this thing is green when we are in range and for example red when we are not and therefore lots of lots of calculations we need to do and then um, you need to understand for example you cannot uh, you need to be in kind of uh, those uh, well, kind of tiles or this you need to be in this grid with all those things and therefore you need to, you need to do lots of calculations so the first thing which we do we check for our mouse button and then 
we do a collision point once again and then with the mouse X and Y so we are hovering with the mouse over the player and if we are then this thing will return an instance if not it will return no one and then I have this little variable which I call it selected at start it is uh, set to false but if we are clicking on the player with our mouse uh, X and Y positions then we are true if not then it says else no 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 my friend you are not selected so let's go right into it because here after that this is where all the magic will happen so here we go and for example we click on this guy but for example if we click with the mouse button let's say here selection is gone and for example if I would press the right mouse button nothing will happen but if I press on this guy, he is selected, then I press the right mouse, right mouse button, Jesus, difficult word to say, um, then I can teleport or just move, whatever you want to call it. So here is the thing. So first of all, this is quite easy and now we are inside. So this is one a separate unit just to have this kind of uh, switch selected to set true or false and then we can actually work with it and this is of course all happening in the step event let's close all those things and here we come to the more interesting part because i guess you want to know how to do those jumps because for now um a little other thing before we jump into the more complicated stuff so here i um draw myself so this guy is being drawn then i'll do a little circle you don't have to do that this is just for me so you understand what the actual um, position of the player is so for example if we zoom in a little bit you see he is centered kind of in the middle here and therefore the sprite is overlapping but still he's still moving in this grid and this is just so you understand why the numbers are the way they are and then I will do some uh, corrections to them well, they are already implemented and then you will see for example if the selection is true I just say hey draw a, a selection wide and this is just well, a sprite which has bottom center once again um, the alignment and then I just draw the white one so you see okay I'm actually um, well selected and and then now I, I can do some action with it this is very primitive and then I have a second um, uh, well sprite I am drawing and this one is basically like the white one and it it will be all red so selection red or selection green therefore I have here a variable which I call jump possible sprite so if the jump is possible and then it's just indicating you if it's red you cannot jump if you are green you can and then as you can see bam jump jump possible sprite is just at the default a uh, no so this is how you can understand this and then for example once it's selected i have a little timer so it delays a little bit you cannot do this thing instantly so and once the timer and this is i guess yeah half a second so after half a second it says hey the jump timer is down and then we move actually in our um, well areas which are the more complicated one because here first of all just taking in we select it then we draw in this little rectangle then we let the timer run down and now we come to the interesting part the calculation because there are a few to understand so how can we actually do this in this game so the point is you what you can do of course there are different approaches to that and you can you you need some sort of reference point where to start from so what i do i just take my little thing which is just drawing the grid and if i put it in the top left corner of the uh, field i want to start from then i have a fixed x and y position in the top left corner and this is actually where i want to go so let's see how is it aligned top left corner alrighty so this is already solid in my opinion and then from this point on i need to calculate and you can actually draw something uh, let's make it a little bit bigger bam 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 so we have our field 
with my uh, first position here, which is from my thingy here. And then let's say we're having my mouse X and Y. Let's say, for example, this is this point. And so I need to calculate this and this. And of course, um, because we are moving in a 16 by 16 grid system, we need to first of all take, let's say, uh, another color. So first of all, we need to calculate some sort of an X position, which is here. So how can we do that? Well, we just take the, let's say for example, this is 800 and this is 200 as an X position. And then we just say, hey, take this mouse position minus, uh, well, this thing here. So we're just cutting out that part, which we don't need. And then we have, first of all, our first length, which, which we need. But this length is, uh, well, most of the time, not what you're looking for. This is just a part because if you would divide it by 16, then you would have a rest. And that rest we need to kick out. So we can actually put in, um, let's say, um, kind of an extra uh, X value, which is um, a 16 times something, which we can actually put into the game. That is exactly what I'm gonna do. So let's go into the player and here we go for the first calculation, which is kind of confusing. But once again, what I do, I just have a temporal variable, which I call, this is just the rest point. So for example, here, once again, I said here, I need kind of the distance, but a distance which is part of the grid. So for example, if you're having all those, uh, no, 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 all those grids here. So let's say, for example, we are looking at this grid. I need very, I need a very, very specific position here, not somewhere in there, 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 because this is where the mouse is actually heading. No, I need a specific point, which is here. Therefore, I need this distance minus the rest value. So let's say, for example, you're having a value of, well, let's make it easy. So let's say, for example, it would be theoretically 160 pixels. Um, the whole length so would be 160 pixels. So this is divided by 10. And then you would have a rest value of 2. And this is the thing we need to kick out because we need, want to have it as, as 160. Then we are landing at this specific fat point, which we want to go. Same um, analogy for the Y position. And therefore, I just, well, take the mouse X position, then minus the reference point, which is the first starting point of the object grid. So the object grid, once again, oh, no, no, no. Object grid, this is uh, this thing here. And then, well, um, duh, 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 duh. then I just kick, uh, I do modulo six, so MOD. Modulo is just basically giving you the rest value of a division. So for example, if you're having, let's say the 162, then it will divide by 16 by 16 by 16 until you just have a rest value. And then this one is two. This is the rest, which I store at the temporal variable rest X and rest Y. And later on, I just give a prediction X and Y. And these are actually the things which I'm putting in to the, uh, for example, once we started, this is, for example, the, the selection rectangle, which you see on the screen. So bam, bam, click on this guy and the, these are the values of X and Y for the selection rectangle, which are the top left of this sprite. So here I need to calculate it. And once again, I start from my reference point, the object grid. So from here, the X and Y position, then go with the length, which is, I guess, uh, something which is going, let's say, to the right. And then minus it. So we land actually on one of those uh, tiles here. So we always end at this uh, point here. This is very, very important. If you wouldn't be doing this, then, well, you would be drawing at a relative position, but a relative position is not something you want to have because, well, let's kill it so that you can actually see it. Uh, da -da -da. Kill, no it so you can actually see this is a thing which you definitely don't want to have so for example now this is a relative position and uh, let's click on this guy as you can see it follows but it never like sticks to one of those uh, 
to, to this grid, which we don't want, and therefore we need to always take away, um, well, this, uh, go away, um, this temporal rest value. And then, for example, having plus 8, thinking, plus 8, why would you do this? Well, this is just a thing, because the way the, as you can see, the dot is not in the top left corner here, it is somewhere down here. And therefore, I just say, okay, right, we need to add some 8 extra pixels. For example, if you are having a different alignment on your player or, or object you want to move, then just take that into consideration. Therefore, I have plus 8 and here plus 16 to correct this value. And therefore, um, then it will always stick to the correct position where you actually want to have it. This is the first calculation. So first of all, once again, to come back to the drawing board, we take the distance between two points. So for example, our starting point and then the point where our thing wants to be. We the minus uh, the rest value, which is, uh, well, taking away uh, uh, the rest. And if you don't have a rest, we, will, we always stick to the grid, which is great. So for example, the rest sometimes is 4, sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's 3. But it doesn't really matter because you always take that out. And then you always land at 160 for this, for example, this specific uh, tile or this grid a piece here. And this is how it basically works. This is the whole thing. The next thing which we're gonna do, because now actually we want to make this jump happen. And therefore I have a variable which I called jump possible. At the start it is impossible to jump. And then for example I'm saying, hey, my maximum amount is 8 pieces times 16 because this is my grid. So for example I can only move 8 Pieces. So, for example, I can let's say move uh, three pieces to the right and five people uh, pieces downwards. And this is always a movement which is not diagonal. So, for example, I cannot just go, uh, let's say, one, two, uh, three, and four. Some this doesn't work. You always need to have uh, one piece and then the other one is like this, like this, and like this. So they always need to be uh, on. Uh, not diagonal movement which is kind of important so this is how it works let's go back to the player this is for example just um, so you actually understand the numbers and then the jump amount is actually how many um, well in pieces you are actually uh, how many pixels you are actually using and then it's calculating hey the jump amount is the prediction thing so we are already besides uh, drawing our prediction uh, selection uh, sprite on the screen, we are saying, hey, take away the from our position the, my, uh, the x and the y position, and then we get uh, a value. For example, let's say we draw that on the screen because we can actually do that. So let's do it. 40 let's go for plus 50 so it, it's actually a little bit away from the player so you can actually see the whole um, number in action so bam select it and what you see always 16 32 48 and for example it doesn't really matter because as you can see now it always moves in the correct spot and it, as you can see, I hover over different positions, but it always say, hey, 64 is okay, because it is part of uh, 8 times 16. So, what's, what's 8 times 16? Uh, 96 or something like this? That doesn't, oh, it doesn't really matter. So, for example, here, no, 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 it's a little bit more. So, it is 112 of maximum. So, what you see, 128 not possible but 112 it still is this is how you can actually define it and for example if you're thinking okay this works for the right side what if I go into negative values because this wouldn't be working with this calculation so what is the magic here so for example here it just works for the right side which is always positive but for example if I say hey 
is, if this is a negative value, I just multiply it with minus one and therefore make it a positive value. And then I'm just checking, hey, is the jump, which I just calculated, smaller than the maximum amount, so the eight times 16, then I just uh, change the sprite, which was before the red one, I change it to the green and bam, here we go. So for example, then if I press the right mouse button, this is the last step, I say, hey, go to the production X and the production uh, Y position and then he will automatically jump to it. And this is just basically how it works. And of course, if this is here, for example, if the jump amount is higher than the maximum amount, it just say, no, 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 my friend, you're way off your limits and then it goes for red then you cannot actually jump because, well, it just works if you are in the range which you defined beforehand. And this is just basically it, no, no real big magic, just the logic behind it is a little bit convoluted from at the start, but what can I say, uh, <laughs> it does work. So on, on this basis you can basically uh, well, make your grid, make a selection and jump to it or for example if you just wanted to do this thingy here of course it's possible as well and bam so that was it for today hopefully you uh, found this useful um, i guess this is for example for games like i don't know um, enter the breach or what was that other one um, something with aliens damn it i forgot it uh, one of the most prominent uh, newer games that you fight against aliens. And I cannot put my finger on it which game it was, but it was a pretty good one. It was pretty successful. They pretty much have a similar system, but of course they draw here some extra tiles so you actually see the movement from here to here. I just skipped on that because I wanted to make it as simple as possible. So hopefully that was of interest and you can actually use this system. Patrons, as usual, have this whole thing, of course, for free as the project. So, have a good one. One up, indeed.